Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinkerer Tools. Tonight I want to try and answer what is the actual difference between DIY level tools and more professional tools. So let's go ahead and get right into that on Tinker with Tools. Now when it comes to power tools, it's not uncommon for users like myself to refer to something as either a DIY level tool, maybe even a prosumer, which is gonna be kind of that more mid-tier, and then obviously talking about professional tools that are gonna occupy that top end space. But tonight I wanna to actually try and answer what is the difference between these levels of tools. I think a lot of times we get guilted into thinking we need the most powerful or the most professional tool, but sometimes depending on the work you're gonna be doing, it's just not necessary. Tonight we are gonna be using TTI as our example, of having a DIY level, a prosumer level, and then obviously a professional level tool. Now for each of these brands, I've selected the top hammer drill offering that they currently have on the shelves today. We could easily do this with other types of tools. And in the future, if you wanna see that, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Now from Ryobi, this is going to be their HP hammer drill. Overall, when you pick up this drill, it does feel like a more professional offering than what you're gonna find in the lower tiers of the Ryobi ranks. But how is it going to compare to some of these other brands? That's what we're gonna to seek to answer today. Now over at Rigid, as it's known here in the United States, this is going to be the new high torque hammer drill that Rigid came out with, I believe late last year or early this year. Rigid, in my opinion, kind of has a history of kind of almost doing a roller coaster effect with their tool offering. If you go back several years, they had their Gen 5X hammer drill that offered just under 800 inch pounds of torque, but shortly thereafter, they introduced their Octane line. You could get up to 1300 inch pounds of torque, but not too long after they introduced Octane, they actually had to pull it back and then they came out with the new brushless hammer drill. And that one was in familiar territory with that previous Gen 5X dropping back down to about 800 inch pounds of torque. Then they came out with this new offering and this one is back up to 1250. So you can see how throughout the years, it kind of teeters going between perhaps more of the DIY level and then kind of coming up here and going against the professional level. That is the truest definition of a prosumer brand and that is where Rigid kind of sits into there. So let's go ahead and see how this stacks up obviously in that hierarchy. And then last but not least, this is gonna be the Milwaukee Gen 4 fuel hammer drill. Now this drill is going to come in more powerful than that rigid. Previously, that one was 1250. This one is going to be 1400 inch pounds of torque. And it is certainly right up there with the top hammer drills in the market. Overall, I think this definitely feels like the most premium drill, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the actual things that we can measure to tell you exactly where this one stacks up. All right, so now when it comes to some of the things that aren't necessarily measurable, if you will, it does feature an all metal chuck. And then one of the things that is very kind of common with Ryobi tools is because they use a kind of stem style pack that they've been able to keep compatibility with this battery style for well over 20 years at this point, you do have a little bit of a larger grip in my opinion. That is something that you may notice there, especially down at the base. It just doesn't slim down as much as the other tools. Ryobi's is going to have the smallest auxiliary handle. It kind of matches the power level that they expect you to have for the tool. And overall, it's actually pretty well made. If I'm being honest, it's actually, in my opinion, one of the nicer handles. It's just if you had a more powerful drill, you would need it to be a little bit longer, but overall it's pretty decent there. Now the rigid ergonomics, these newer drills are going to be better ergonomically in my opinion. It is something that I just didn't ever love about them, how big and bulky those drills were. Overall, when you do run it with this giant eight amp hour battery, it does feel a little heavy on the bottom. Obviously you can battery size down and you do still get some decent performance out of it. It's just not going to be kind of that top tier. Once again, you got an all metal chuck here. And then with the auxiliary handle here with the rigid, this one is going to be kind of probably in maybe second place here where these things still kind of rotate independently, but overall it's a decent handle. I think it works pretty nice. 
It is going to be a little bit bigger than the Ryobi, for example, but it's because there's more power here. And overall, it's not the greatest handle ever, but it certainly is decent for what it is. All right, now when it comes to the Milwaukee, I think this tool has the most premium feel to it. I know that some of you don't like when I use that to kind of describe how something is, but the materials just feel a little nicer. I do like this chuck the most out of the three here. The grip on here is going to be pretty decent in my opinion. Now the handle from Milwaukee is going to be something that I've mentioned in previous videos. They had a really good handle on the Gen 3 and actually you can use the Gen 3 handle on the Gen 4 drill. They had a pretty good handle design, something that I think worked really well. It just had a pin that kind of went through and kind of locked it in place but because of how they had it, have it stored in the new case, they weren't able to use that handle in my opinion. So I went to this design and overall it is my least favorite of here. Once you get it secured on the tool, it does work fine. It's just not great when you're putting it on because it just wants to move around and wobble. With Ryobi, you're either going to have their standard batteries or their high performance batteries. Their high performance batteries are going to have some additional prongs that do allow communication with the tool kind of to unlock some of the performance of it. And so that is going to be the difference between those and the standard batteries. Batteries you could go to, they do have a high performance six amp hour that might perform a little bit better, but overall it's the same form factor as this battery. And they do have some larger batteries like a nine amp hour, but it's not like some of these other brands we'll talk about in a minute where there's a lot of different variety in the different batteries you're doing. When you go to rigid on their more modern batteries, their standard batteries, their max output batteries, and then this one specifically, is going to be the Max Output EXP, Extended Performance, I believe is what that stands for. And that is where you're gonna be getting 21,700 cells inside the battery. I can tell you that the performance of this drill is definitely better when you do move up to that eight amp hour battery. Coincidentally, you can get those same types of cells in the older Octane batteries. I don't own any Octane batteries, so I can't vouch for how the performance is on there. I would imagine that you would see some performance benefit in going with that style of battery if you have them. All right, now Milwaukee, Milwaukee is definitely going to have the most battery options. That is where you're going to be seeing kind of their five tier power level. We're going to be talking about four of those tiers today. Kind of standard, you're going to have their CP batteries, which are going to be their compact M18 batteries. The next tier is going to be kind of their XC batteries. And that's where you're going to be getting like the XC 5.0, for example. That's what this comes kitted with. And the drill operates fine on there, but you're not going to be unlocking all the different potential that you're getting on that battery, in my opinion. So then kind of that next level up is going to be those high output batteries. Now those high output batteries are going to have 21,700 cells, like we mentioned in their previously, and you're going to see kind of a similar performance bump when you move up to that battery. Then last but not least is going to be their forge battery, which is their new lithium pouch cells, if you will. And that is where you do get a pretty good performance benefit. This is definitely the most performant battery they have. I've got a whole video on that if you want to check it out. And I've also done videos on the rigid where you can see that as well.
dropping to speed one. Now let's talk about perhaps one of the most important categories is going to be price. Tool only price, if you just go out and buy each one of these drills as a tool only, 129 kind of standard pricing for the, the Ryobi when there's not sales or promotions happening, then you're gonna be at 149 for the Rigid and 199 for the Milwaukee. So an $80 price difference is certainly something to look at. The Ryobi comes kitted at 179. So the kit price on the Ryobi is actually going to be less than the bare tool price of the Milwaukee. The Rigid currently only comes kitted with the impact driver, not just in a kit on its own. So unfortunately, you're just really not picking that one up as a kitted price. Now the Milwaukee does come kitted with the two five amp hour batteries and a charger in its own case, and that is going to be $299. So once again, the price difference between these tools is going to be considerable. All right, so when it comes down to it, we've kind of shown you what the performance difference and maybe what some of the measurable differences between these tools. There certainly is a different. The Milwaukee is going to perform definitely on a different level than what that Ryobi does. But I should point out that the Ryobi was capable of doing pretty much every test that we put it through tonight. The Ryobi definitely taps out when you get into those harder tasks. But if you're doing it on lighter duty stuff, and when I say lighter duty, anything up to about a four inch screw, it's going to be able to do it fairly similar to what you're going to be seeing. You're gonna to have to drop down to speed one with that tool a lot sooner than what you're going to be able to do with the other. So at the end of the day, it can do the test. And I think that's an important takeaway here. Is you're still able to do a lot of the things there. It's just going to do it slower. The value proposition of Ryobi is going to be excellent. And I've always been a strong proponent of that as a brand for a lot of people because of just how many different tools that they offer there and all the things they can do. Now, when it comes to rigid, this level of rigid or this version of rigid's drill 
is certainly going to be competitive in a lot of tests with the Milwaukee. You'll notice that it did a lot of those different tests almost equal to the Milwaukee, and it certainly was capable of doing it. It's just a little bit behind, in my opinion, in terms of the overall level of performance and in some of the refinement of the tools. Where I think I worry more about Rigid as a professional brand is just with some of those ebbs and flows of the performance over the years with different models. What you're buying today is very close to kind of the upper level of those performance, but if you tried to buy into it a few years ago before this model came out, you might have found yourself thinking it felt much more like the Ryobi than it does the actual Milwaukee. And that's my concern with there is the inconsistency in some of their offerings over the years. But right now, this drill is actually a very performant drill. And especially where you're going to be getting it for $50 cheaper is that bare tool price. That is something where the value starts to get a little bit better. Now, Milwaukee definitely stands out as the most professional, in my opinion, or the one that was able to do the most things, the most consistently, and definitely, in my opinion, felt the nicest to use. There is nothing wrong with someone wanting to have professional tools, even if they're not a professional person, like myself. I am not a professional in the trades. I am not using my tools in that capacity, but I do use my tools often, and I've often said if there was only one brand that I was going to be on, I'd probably default to Milwaukee because I just feel like overall the brand offers you a lot. Now that definitely comes at a price. $200 bare tool for this drill is going to be significantly more than those others. And although it can do the task better, faster, stronger, for example, you're just not going to be getting something that it can do that the others can't do all that often unless you're really just pushing it to the limit. So there you have it. That is kind of the difference between these and hopefully it helps to illustrate what the actual measurable difference is between a DIY level tool and something more professional. Go ahead and let me know if you were picking to start over your tool collection, which one of these three you'd end up with and why. Go ahead and leave those down in the comments below. If you like this video and if you'd like to see it for more brand hierarchies or different tools, go ahead and let me know those in the comments down below as well. And now as always, hope you have a happy holiday season and until next time, I'll catch you on Tinker with Tools.